Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Maria Nikolic, and I'm coming from Share Foundation from Belgrade. And today I'm going to introduce you an initiative called Mini Share. But let's see first what Big Share is about. There is a video, number one. So can we see it? So the bad news is there is a war going on. And it's probably one of the most important battles that we, as several generations gathered here, have to fight. This is also the time where the counter-revolution came on strong. This isn't an optimist story. This isn't strictly a pessimist story, but there are some real big dangers for the future ahead of us. We lost politically. People who dominate now are not corporate guys at all. They're finance guys. And the more they rely on the secrecy, the more likely it is that they are corrupt. We lost technologically. Internet is being more and more centralized. It's being more and more censored because it's being centralized. I don't like that. I don't like when companies tell me what I could do with products that I've purchased. We lost culturally. Internet has not strengthened independent culture to the extent that we hoped it would do. On the internet, a collection of enough fuck-ups, trying enough things, can have an amazing effect. We should talk about how to share less. We should talk about how to share differently. We can win this war without spilling one drop of blood. We can win this war using words, intelligence, code, and pixels. So it's not unusual that we decide to put things like this, a little, little bit militant style, especially when we see where I'm coming from and, and where this world is going to. So a share conference is not only an open source conference. It's also about understanding and celebrating internet culture and all aspects of open, decentralized and accessible forms of communication exchange and creation. It's also about empowerment of individuals and networking of like-minded people. It's also about setting the values and new standards so that will prevent actually any kind of oppression, censorship and surveillance for our future generations. It's also about alternative economic, culture and educational models. It's also about internet ecology and struggle to uh, keep internet as open and free territory for all of us. It's about energizing subculture groups and praising diversity, diversities that all these uh, cultures are bringing. It's about promoting open access to software, hardware, information, knowledge, science, uh, government, and uh, design, and everything else that can be open. But most of the time it's about sharing, and it's about how to do it yourself, and of course it's about how cats doing flips, birds flying over the moon, and robot, robots making beeps. So very early, I, can, I and I can fairly say the whole my generation, we developed the sense of protesting. And th there was no particular leader or organization that came to our school and organized us for some political protest, but kids felt it as something they also have a right to do to fight for their things. So there was not such a thing as internet, but, and this was in uh, late 19s, and a couple years later, with our fellow citizens, we brought down dictator. 
and things are just happening still. And the question is, what is so common for all these actually very, very different people? Usually, it's the sense of freedom. So nowadays, if we put it in more planetary shape, uh, the sense of freedom has its own manifestation, and it's internet. So there are these guys that are trying to control it to different, different legislations through SOPA, PIPA, ACTA. So we have a sense of uh, feeling, actually, that, the, that our freedom is losing its ground. So the thing is that we have to talk to our kids. So let's see how do we bring kids into this. Uh, all these fears that adults have, that they can't uh, have uh, like free access to all different fields on the Internet, might not be fears that our kids will have, because for them it's going to be quite natural. They won't uh, questioning who is controlling, gathering and selling the data that, are, that they put on the Internet but they won't understand why, why the world is an efficient, slow, and not on a click when everything else is. So here we are actually jumping into the river called Future, and let's see another video. Think how this could escalate. It's a, a bit of a dissolution that the future might not be all that nice, but it might it literally be dangerous, it might literally be deadly. We will live in 10 years from now in a world with 500 military zone smart cities and Mad Max in between. Two billion jobs to disappear by 2030. At some point society stops functioning. Above 20% unemployment you get riots. You get Populism. The IBM Cisco smart cities that are already also knocking on the doors of the mayors of Central Europe and basically all the cities that are going to Rio and offering the mayor a dashboard of his city. Uh, they'll put everything, uh, all the sensors in the city and the, the mayor will be sort of looking at it and getting a full view. They're out there, they're selling and they're, they will put all the data that we paid for with public money in Texas that now they will sort of get for free and they will put it in their data formats and systems, mash it up in a way that we can never get the real raw data out of there again. And your young people, and this is your heritage. That's your future among many. I mean, that's one future that your region, the Balkans, will fully participate in with the entire rest of the world. You are nailed to that historical reality. There's no dodging it. There's no ducking it. It's all yours. Yeah, here Bruce Sterling had uh, climate change on his mind, and that's definitely something we all should be aware of, no matter where we live or how do we do that. But talking about the future is talking about the present. So as in a state of emergency, in we in SHARE, we decided to make mini-SHARE, which was actually the same program only for kids. So you could come to SHARE conference to listen to the talk, and then you could leave your kid in another room doing the same thing. And it was fun for the whole family. So at this point, I would emphasize three important things. First is that mini-SHARE is not about economy or profit. So it's not another product to sell. But the question is, do we have enough capacity for the level of innovation that are actually uh, needed for the new standards of education? And recent uh, researches are showing that our kids uh, rapidly deteriorate their capacity for uh, creative thinking once they enter the school. So schools should develop projects which are more intuitively interactive, smart, and open source. So helping schools 
to develop these kind of projects is actually helping our kids to better understand the context when, where they live and uh, learn. And not forget about collaboration, collaborations of teachers, pedagogues, parents, uh, initiatives, uh, uh, everyone who is involved in, in the process of, of learning and education should work with kids, not only for kids. And the success is inevitable. So at the mini share, we had six different workshops. There was Maidanica, a workshop for kids from two to four, and it was for empower their uh, uh, perceptive functions by uh, making different instruments through, uh, by using different materials, basically raw materials. There was multimedia workshop for kids 6 to 12, and uh, they were introduced to stop uh, frame and animation. Uh, their peers, uh, who were more into electronics, had the opportunity to make uh, uh, brush, brush bots moving around. But very serious program was for teenagers, 12 to 16 years old, and they had the main speaker from the main program talk to them almost in the same way. So we had Smari McCarthy from Icelandic Digital Freedom Society talk to them about privacy and security. There was Rob van Kranenburg, uh, who introduced them uh, Internet of Things, and we had ex-spokesman of WikiLeaks, uh, Daniel Dorschberg, uh, who emphasized them uh, why it's strongly important for them as upcoming generations to use internet as a tool to raise alarm and uh, fight corruption and bring justice. So it's the last clip, very short. I will take advantage to just uh, present shortly what we did the uh, last couple of days up there on MiniShare. Oh. I'm testing out my engineering. Uh, Yay, your that. engineering is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When it's audio video ready on it, we uh, do stop frame. We will give our characters a different sound. Ako misle da treba. Ja sam smija sačuda te upati, pa ću da te pojdem. Sve ove karaktere dodajemo jedan od drugi, tako da na kraju pravimo jednu veliku gromadu. Kad sam krenuo da kupim cipa, a koliko da ih kupim? Jedn, dva, sto pedeset, tri. Hajde ja da kupim sto kamera, svi za ustavljaju ga. Just tell us quickly what you did. We learned about internet hacking, that it's bad. What did you... No, I didn't tell you that hacking was bad. <laughs> I, <laughs> I told you breaking into things is bad. A couple of them will have a six months project. They will uh, develop the project of smart sneakers. Am I right? Not only smart sneakers, but uh, smart home, smart living life. You have to get a little bit more political because it's not going to happen uh, by itself. I think the interesting lesson to learn here is that we 
have figured out that everybody can participate in politics. So the coding power and the hacking power that we all have and that a lot of friends of us have um, should not be directed now against hacking all these dead systems. It should be in building the new gateways for the new systems because that's where the power is going to be. So we should start making open source washing machines, open source coffee machines, open source toothbrushes. We should try and get the objects, the devices, and it should run not on an iPhone, but on something that we can build ourselves. So we have acceleration in combinatorial innovation. We are building a spaceship. And in a way, we want to put everything on a smart grid. So in the near future, everything is going to talk to everything. And the question is if everything is going to be in the 500 smart cities that Rob said in the video and in favelas, on the other side, or we are going to live in more inclusive, smart societies where everyone will have opportunity to participate in, in a way. So the thing is that we should start talking to our kids in a proper way since beginning. And if we don't do that now, it won't be enough that our kid is just a mogul, an expert in particular field while the finance guys is uh, having the whole wealth, like 1% of them are owing uh, uh, the rest of the world's wealth. So he, having kids experiment day here in, in, in Paris in, on Open World Forum is actually just beginning of initiative uh, that we actually have to uh, empower our kids, uh, equip them with uh, tools uh, like coding, hacking, uh, inform them about the privacy, and the success is there, hopefully for the better future. So hack the school and change the educational paradigm. Thank you. <laughs>